Hello and welcome to this video. So you've seen in the previous short video that I highlighted that we had an error inside the inside bar explore. This error was in this get take profit and get stop loss. The reason being is I'm adding here the stop loss and the take profit to the mid high or mid low prices rather than the actual entry point. I'm going to fix that then just by rubbing over these four here with the entry, rerunning the cell and making sure to rerun the cells below and save the pickle as well. You remember from the previous video that we coded, we were getting the five minute candles for a particular trade and we looked at the first 10 of them here just to check we had a signal. Now a bit further up in the code, where we make this trade end here, I'd like to add on a new column and I'd like to call this trade start and that's the trades.time plus time delta hours is four. And also we can have a quick check that that's okay by looking at the head of the data frame here. So why have we done this? Well, if I just go back to the chart of the trades to explain, there was another small inaccuracy in the code. This one doesn't affect the result, but nevertheless the efficiency. So let's take this cell here that we have at 1400 on January the 8th. We actually set this trade, so they take profit, stop loss and the trigger point at the end of this candle, which is 1800 on January the 8th. In other words, we need to start taking the M5 data from the following candle. Now we were taking from the time, so the actual time of that trade, and we don't need that. So we're adding on four hours so that we know when the following candle is, and that's when we can take our five minute data. So we're going to copy that trade start, make sure you execute these cells, and instead of row.time, we'll take the trade start here and just execute that. And you can see in the brackets, we get fewer five minute candles to analyze. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this drop NA and reset trades, delete that cell, and put them directly in a cell above the uh, signal text here, just so it's out of the way. And now we can start fleshing out all the functions inside here to further our analysis. So the first thing we're going to do in process M5 is make a new variable called result and set that equal to 0.0. .0. And now we have to make a bit of an alteration to our loop here. So you remember that we've got our values for the mid-close price for our M5 data frame here. And we loop through all of those values and each value price is set to that value. And then we can do something with the price, like printing it here or looking for the trigger. When we've triggered a trade, what we want to do is we want to analyze from that point where we've triggered and then step through the prices and see if we hit the take profit or the stop loss or just end the trade. That means we need to know where we are in our iterations through values. Now, just in case it's not clear, if I just make a, a comment here and make a, a list, let's say a list of just some numbers, doesn't really matter what. Now, when I'm looping through this list, if these were the mid C values of the M5 data frame, price would be 23, then 34, then 65, and so on. Important here is the index that each price is at. So the first index is index zero. So let's say we trigger at the 65, that means we've triggered at index two, because you have zero, one, two, three, and four. And if we trigger at 65, we'd like to tell the program to start analyzing from index two. In other words, when we're looping through here, we need to know what index we are in the values. Otherwise, we'll just be starting the analysis from the beginning every time. So to do that, we have to alter this slightly. So we have to type index comma price in enumerate and then the values. And what that'll do is that for index will give us the index that we're at when we're looping through this list. So inside the print statement here, then we can print the index, execute the code. And now you can see if I execute the loop down the bottom here that I have signal at index 91, signal at index 231 and so on. So now we've got that sorted, we know that inside here where we've got our trigger, we actually need to process and analyze our trade. So above process M5, I'm going to write a new definition called def process trade, and then start index direction, TP, SL, prices, and start price. Oops, I've called that trades instead of trade, so process trade, that's better. So hopefully the arguments are clear here. This is this index that we needed and the reason we changed the loop below. So we know where we're starting in our list of prices, which is here. The start price here is simply the entry point. Then we've got the direction, so buy or sell, and the take profit and the stop loss. What we need to do is here is we need to ask if the direction is one, then we'll process a buy, else we'll process a sell. Now in both cases there, we're actually going to return the result that we get from processing. So we'll put a return in front of each of those. And now above process trade, I'm just going to write out the definitions for each of those two functions. So we'll have def process buy and the start index, take profit, stop loss prices and start price. Then I'll do almost exactly the same definition for process sell just below it. 
What we can do now is we can fill out the arguments inside process buy and process sell. So we have start index, take profit, stop loss, prices, and start price. So just to recap where we are then, we're going to call this process trade down inside here where this break is. And then when we call process trade, we have all the information. We decide whether we have a buy or sell to process, which of course determines which direction gives us a positive or negative result. And then for each of those, we're going to return a result, which we're going to calculate inside here. So looking first at the process buy, we want to loop through the prices from the index that we've detected of where we've actually triggered. So we'll say for price in prices start index. And then we'll put the colon saying we want to go to the end of the list. And now we'll say if the price is greater than or equal to our take profit, we will return our 2.0. Else, if the price is less than or equal to the stop loss, return minus 1.0. Otherwise, we'll just return zero for now. So for the process sell, we can actually copy and paste all of this, which is always dangerous. And now we're going to say if the price is less than or equal to the take profit, then we return. Or if we're greater than or equal to the stop loss, then we return. So once we've got that logic in, the last thing to do down here then, is where this signal is, is say that the result is equal to and process a trade then index, row dot signal, take profit, row dot stop loss, the prices themselves, and the row entry. And then last but not least, we return the result. So down above our loop, then let's make a total equal to zero. And then we can increment our total by adding on the result of processing our data. We'll still break here. And then what we can do right at the end is just print out the total. So executing that then, let's see what we have. And we can see that we get a total at the end of the first 10 trades, still positive, of 3.0. So now I'm just going to comment out the line here where we've actually got the signal detection. And I'm going to comment out the printing here and comment out the breaking for more than 10 trades and just leave the whole thing running. And we get a total of still positive in the simulation of 85, but less than half of what we had with the four hour candles. So we have our first little result here. Of course, there's something missing in the code and that's what we're going to do in the next video. So we're saying here, if we don't break the take profit or the stop loss, then return zero. Well, of course, if we go back to the graph, I just scroll down, there are some trades, I can't remember which, but some trades that will be running, but then will be have to be forcibly stopped because we get a new signal, and that's part of the rules. So we need to put another function in to actually calculate what fraction of the two or the minus one we've actually got and add or subtract that then from our result. But that's something we'll look at doing in the next video. For now, we've done enough. We've got a good piece of logic going. It seems to be quite quick, which is good. So comments, questions, welcome as always. I apologize again for the couple of errors, but my, my brain struggles with this kind of stuff. Um, but hopefully it's all okay now and see you in the next video.